What's up, guys? We are live for AMA Thursday. I'm your host, Greg Mercer. I'm joined by my co-host, Rolando Galliana. We're also trying to stream two people live on Instagram right now, and Rolando is getting that set up. But the goal of this AMA is to answer whatever questions you guys have for us, all right? So we just released episode two of season four of the Million Dollar Case Study. That went live on Tuesday of this week. And today, we want to answer any questions that you guys have for us. We would prefer for them to be about this episode of the Million Dollar Case Study, which has to do with um, advanced product research, all right? Um, just so that you guys know, we do have some swag to give away throughout this AMA, so make sure you stay tuned and we're gonna release the details of that pretty shortly. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So we have our first question from Christine Grace and says, if we do everything as instructed, what would be a reason our products would not be successful? Good question, Christine going to increase your chances of being successful, but nothing in business um, is 100% a guarantee. If you follow all the instructions, because I think that was kind of like your question, I'd say reasons that um, you may not succeed would be things like if you uh, run into quality control issues with the factory. You know, if, you, if you're getting this product from the factory and it turns out whatever they send you is of poor quality and it's getting bad reviews, that can oftentimes lead to like then a poor listing which um, won't sell well. Um, that's like the first one that comes to mind. But again, throughout the Million Dollar Case Study, we're gonna be teaching you all the ways to mitigate all these different risks, so like how to do inspections with the factory, how to make sure there's enough demand for your product, all those different types of things, all right? Next question um, from Charlie. In the Chrome extension, how can a seller be lower in the listing with higher sales and higher revenue? So with, um, so with Amazon's A9 algorithm, it's no, uh, there's many factors that are taken into account when it comes to, uh, ranking your product, all right? So this these are things like the how the the sales um, velocity for your product. These are other things like um, how relevant it is for that particular keyword. This is the conversion rate. So just because someone has higher sales doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna rank better. That's not the only factor that's taken into account with Amazon's A9 algorithm, all right? So hopefully that answers the question. All right, let's try this. Back up, going solo here. Um, so let me find another question here because I forgot what that last one that Rolando asked was. Um, do you register on brand registry to create new listings? You don't have to register on brand registry in, to create a new listing, okay? the. Brand registry gives you some benefits. Uh, these types of benefits are things like being able to do enhanced brand content. They give you a few additional tools to help protect your brand. Um, let's see, what else? And if we look kind of like over the years where this is going, like more and more is trending towards Amazon giving like more power and more tools to people who register their brand, but it's not required by any means to sell on Amazon, okay? So, and you don't need brand registry to create your listing. Greg, would you recommend opening a seller account now during product research as an individual then upgrade to pro as you near launch? Um, Adam from YouTube, to be honest, I heard Amazon took away the individual account and that you now have to pay for the pro account. I'm not quite sure. If it's free, then sure, go ahead and sign up for an individual account. I don't see any harm in that. But if they are making you pay a monthly fee for it now, I wouldn't worry about it because it's not a uh, there's not much benefit before you've launched. On YouTube, Sally Ma said, "What advice would you give someone who is new and afraid to invest and lose money and is stuck in search of a perfect product?" Oh, I already answered that one. All right. What was wrong with products you haven't reordered, Greg? Um, good question. So I think you're asking this because like in the, the last Million Dollar Case study, I spoke about how you know not all of my products are successful. However, 
I'd say about 90% of them are. And the ones that aren't successful, I don't reorder these for a number of reasons. It's usually that the margins are too low. So there's too many competitors that have entered into the space. And as a result, I just can't make good money. It's not worth it for me to invest my money and like take on the risk of a new product or reordering it for only like 5% or 8% margins or whatever else. It's just not worth it, right? Um, the other reason that I don't, the other reason that I wouldn't reorder my product is from time to time, I'll get like a poor quality product from a factory. I'll think I'll have it all figured out, but then the material they packaging it and ends up getting damaged when they send it into Amazon or whatever else the reason may be. The, in that case, you know, if I'm getting a bunch of like three and a half or four star reviews or whatever else, oftentimes I won't reorder that product. So that's, um, hopefully that answers it. On Chrome extension, do you sort by sales or do you use the default ranking? I usually just use the default ranking. Um, I like to see you know how it's naturally ranked for that particular uh, for that particular kind of like search page. So yeah, I mean you can sort by sales if you want if that's helpful to you. But yeah, I, I normally just leave it as default. All right, um, on YouTube, hey Greg, what's a good place to find freight forwarders that isn't Freightos? Good question. Um, I usually use Freightos or Flexport. If you don't want to use either of those, uh, you could probably just Google it, ask around the Facebook groups who other people are using, who they like. There's a bazillion and one freight forwarders out there, so there's no shortage. Um, on YouTube, as you said, do you recommend factoring in shipping costs during the research phase in order to gauge true product profitability? Yes, I do. Shipping's oftentimes one of the biggest expenses that you'll receive after the product cost and the Amazon fees. So as a rough rule of thumb, you can use the rule of thumb, um, let's see what it is about $7 per kilogram for air freight, if you're doing air freight. If you're doing ocean freight, it's a little bit different because there's a lot of like fixed fees and whatever else. But if we're just talking about like rough rule of thumbs, you could probably factor in about um, $1,000 for like a third of a container, so a less than container load. And as a rough rule of thumb, you could probably do like $3,000 for a full container load. Of course, those are just rough rules of thumb. They, uh, they don't work for everything. And of course, you can always just ask your freight forwarder for an actual quote. But if you're just trying to gauge like overall profitability, if you're trying to narrow down like 20 product ideas down to 10 product ideas, you could kind of use that as a rule of thumb. Do you know why Amazon puts a retail contribution on your listing? My private label has been locked and I can no longer end it this. I barely launched this week. Any help would be appreciated. Just contact seller support. Let them know that you're the brand owner and you're the one that created this listing. Again, this is one of the things that helps a little bit if you do have, um, uh, if you do have, man, my brain's not working very good today. Brand registry. <laughs> if you do a brand registry, it helps a little bit with this, but just email seller support and they should get that taken off. Anna on YouTube says, please suggest web app search criteria for smaller markets like Spain, Italy, et cetera. Anna, what I would recommend for you actually would be to just go back to our last million dollar case study season three where we launched the Jungle Slumber. In that particular one, we launched in the UK market, but I speak a little bit about search criteria for the smaller EU markets as well. Um, Deanna says, I'm not launched yet. Worried I'm gonna miss Q4 sales. Should I start out exploring wholesaling and buy box competing or still move forward with private label? So if you move forward with private label at the speed at which we're doing so in season four, the million dollar case study, you can probably get in on a lot of Q4. However, you do need to place those orders probably within the next month in order to get it um, in for the kind of like the hot part of Q4. I would probably still move forward with that, but if you're more comfortable exploring wholesale and trying to compete for the buy box, that's fine too. Um, people definitely do have success with this. On YouTube, Adventurous Human says, do you skip over products with no image in the product database? What's up with those? No, I don't necessarily skip over them. A lot of those don't have images on Amazon. 
in those scenarios that you click on those in the product database and they don't have an image and then you land on Amazon and it does have one, that just means that those were just added in the past few days and the refreshed version hasn't shown up in the product database yet. Alan on Facebook says, uh, do new rules about tariffs affect your importing? If it does, how much percentage do you have to pay? Yes, tariffs are a ever evolving and changing landscape. There's no one percentage that I can give you because it depends what type of freight you're importing, okay? So yeah, some are like less than a percent, other ones I think are five, 10, maybe even 20%. Uh, so the best thing to do would be to ask your freight forwarder, this is what I do, I just ask my freight forwarder, I describe the goods to them and ask them what the percentage of tariffs would be. Just though, as just so you understand a little bit better, out of all the goods that I import, I think most of them are like 1% or less. It's like it's a very small amount. Anthony on YouTube says, hey guys, I'm product research. If reviews look good, sales in the top 10 are good, and doesn't look seasonal or hazardous, what would be an unexpected reason to drop the idea from past experience? An unexpected reason may be that this item's actually patented, in which case um, you're not able to sell it or sell the exact same item at least. So. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think if there's any other unexpected ones. Not that I really know of. On YouTube, hey Greg, do you need to have a variation? My understanding from Amazon is you need to have variations to qualify for lightning deals. What is your experience? No, you don't have to have variations and you don't have to have variations to qualify for lightning deals. I'm not sure where that came from. Million dollar question, how do you see the Indian market? This is from Mahish on YouTube. Good question. Um, I haven't personally sold anything on the um, Amazon India marketplace before, all right? I, I know a lot of people do and a lot of people have good success there. It's obviously a very fast growing economy that from my understanding is becoming more and more comfortable um, with e-commerce and shopping on Amazon. So if you like are from India or you feel comfortable with that selling on that marketplace or it seems the easiest for you, then I'd say go for it. What I always recommend to people when they ask me that, they'll say like, what, what market do you recommend I sell in? I recommend you sell in whatever market seems the easiest for you or there is the least barrier of entry. So like if you live in India and that seems very non-intimidating to sell on Amazon India, then I'd say go for it. Um, another one on YouTube says, is it important to build a brand or sell random products? So a lot of people have different opinions on this. My opinion is just sell random products and let me tell you why. And this goes against kind of like the grain. Most influencers or gurus or whoever else would try to say like you have to build a brand, you have to build a brand, blah, 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 blah. The reason that I don't think it's important to build a brand and I think you should just sell whatever a good opportunity is, is that no one on Amazon is gonna be searching for your particular brand, all right? That's just the fact of the matter. Your brand is not that special. Um, you're not gonna have like good, you know, it's not like you're gonna grow a brand like Coca-Cola or whatever else that like people are gonna go to Amazon and be searching for. It's just not the case. Or I mean, that would take like a very long time and a lot of money. If you're just trying to leverage the power of Amazon and private labeling, then I don't think that's important. What they are gonna do is they are gonna go to Amazon. They're just gonna type in the search bar whatever they're looking for. So if I'm looking for one of these clamps, I'm just gonna go in on Amazon and I'm gonna search um, for whatever style clamp this thing's called, right? I don't search for the brand name because people on Amazon don't really care about brands. What they care about is the best product for the price. And the reason brands really like even exist is, this is, again, this is my opinion, but prior to the internet era, the reason that brands were important is because you understood the quality or what to expect out of the product. So if, again, if we use Coca-Cola as an example, I could buy a Coke anywhere in the world and I would, under, I would know what it would taste like and I would understand there's a certain quality associated with it or um, uh, just a certain taste associated with it, okay? Now, now that, or again, like if we talk about like sleeping bags, like we sold a sleeping bag, you know, like I know that like Coleman products are pretty decent quality and like pretty good bang for the buck, right? Or I know like a North Face or Patagonia sleeping bag would be a very high quality item. 
But now that that's essentially been replaced by social proof in the form of reviews on Amazon, brands aren't as important to people anymore. What is important is the quality of product, which they can understand through customer reviews, the price, and that, you know, like easy for them to get and quick. So no, with Amazon, in my opinion, brands are becoming less and less important each year. There are some edge cases like clothing or items that people are using brands for a status symbol, but with most private label products, I don't think that's really the case. If I go to Amazon, I buy some of these clamps, I'm just looking for the best, high, highest quality clamps for the best dollar. I have no idea who makes this clamp and I don't care. Andre says, hi from Portugal, just curious about one thing. I don't recall anyone mentioning weight and product dimensions. Any recommendations? Where should we draw a line? I don't have firm guidelines for you here, but what I will say is lighter, smaller items tend to be less headaches. They're easier to ship. You don't have to worry about Amazon storage fees as much, okay? So there's gonna be less headache. That being said, a lot of like the big stuff, Marshmallow sticks, these are pretty big. These are less competitive because people don't wanna deal with, deal with some of the headaches associated with them, like shipping by ocean and the, the storage limits associated with them, okay? So I, I don't think you have to draw the line anywhere. Just make sure if you're selling these big products that you understand Amazon storage limits, that you understand the shipping costs associated with them, all right? I found a niche with relatively low competition. When I searched it further on Alibaba, I found basically the suppliers are selling the similar products. Should I give up on this? So <laughs> I think what's probably happening here is you went to Alibaba, you searched for it, and you saw images that are the same images or what are on Amazon. This doesn't mean that these factories are selling these products on Amazon. What? Uh, Chinese factories have been known to to just rip off the images from Amazon, okay? So, like, actually, if you go on Alibaba right now and search for marshmallow sticks, you'll see a lot of the photos that I took of my marshmallow sticks on these Alibaba listings. Those aren't even my supplier. They're just ripping off my images off my Amazon site, okay? Uh, a lot of you guys probably know this, but like IP protection laws and just IP laws in general in China aren't as strict or might not even exist of what they do in uh, like North America or even the EU. So it's, they don't even necessarily think of that as unethical or and it's, I don't, I think it's not even illegal. So that's why you see so many of these images on Alibaba that match what they are on Amazon. That doesn't mean that they're the factor. That doesn't mean that they sell their products on Amazon though. Can you put your company email on the package? Is Amazon against that? No, put that, put the your email on the package. I mean, just think like, you know, if you buy a Sony TV from Amazon, Sony's website and email address and everything else is going to be on the package. That's perfectly fine. I don't know why people. I think there's like rumors floating around that like you can't do that. But like I said, like Sony and Panasonic and whoever else, like these people don't make special packaging just for Amazon. They have all their contact and marketing materials on there. When did you realize you were gonna be very successful with Amazon FBA? This Catherine asked this on YouTube. This is a good question, I don't really know. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if there was like one day I sat down and be like, whoa, I'm gonna be successful with Amazon FBA. I'd, I'm kind of bad at kind of like stopping and reflecting on those things. I more so have the personality of just like, continue to do more, continue to grow, continue to do better. Uh, Rarely do I like kind of like sit down and be like, oh wow, I've I now realize I'm gonna be successful. So I don't know. Dylan on YouTube said, Hey Greg, I really want to get into private label, but my account was suspended in December while doing retail arbitrage and online arbitrage. I've tried everything to get it back. What do you recommend? Change career path? I would recommend probably hiring an expert to get it unsuspended for you. I don't know exactly what you were doing. It sounds like it was something that was probably pretty bad if you haven't been able to give it back. But these experts, it you do it does cost a little bit of money or a good chunk of money to pay them. However, they have pretty much a 100% success rate of getting these accounts back on Amazon, all right? So if that was the case, you could do that. Um, 
Of course, if you have a, a family member or a spouse or whatever else, you could have them open an account. However, you're entering a pretty strong gray area here um, because you're really only supposed to have like one account per household. So something to think about. Have you ever done an Amazon warehouse tour? I'm thinking of doing one soon. I was at Amazon a few weeks ago in uh, their Seattle uh, headquarters and I got to see a lot of like the headquarters and I spoke to a lot of people while I was there and that was really cool. But I actually haven't been to a warehouse yet. It reminded me of that because while I was there, I was like, dude, I really need to go on a warehouse tour. Or the guy who was taking me around, he had just, he, was, he works at Amazon. He just went to a warehouse for the first time like the week before. And I guess part of a training for a new role he was taking on, he had to like work in the warehouse for two days. He said it was like pretty tough work, um, but it was pretty fascinating to hear him tell the stories about it. So I, I haven't done one. I need to go do one though. I think there's a, some part, a website that you can sign up for warehouse tours uh, on Amazon. However, I hear they're pretty like booked up for months in advance, but hey, it'd be fun to get on it. Do you have a product calculator that I can use to work out taxes, shipping, PPC, etc.? It's hard calculating all of this every time you want to change purchase and selling price. Thanks so much. We do have a Excel sheet that we built to do this. Um, so maybe one of the people that are helping with the chat box can try to find a link for it. I don't remember like what blog post or what prior content it was with, but we do have a, a calculator that you can use to do this. I'm just not quite sure how to get to it right now. Maybe if you Google it with Jungle Scout, you could find it. If not, we'll try to drop something, a uh, link for it in the chat box. Uh, DeAndrea said, hey Greg, is it possible to import internationally using just Seller Essentials UPS and send your supplier the shipping labels? Uh, no, unless they've changed something, this isn't possible. When you go into Amazon and put the from address of somewhere overseas, like in China, after you do that, the UPS small parcel option is no longer available. So no, I don't think you're going to be able to do that unless they change something and there's something new. If we were to find and make modifications stand out from the competitors, how do we protect our listing item from other sellers? Good question. So the only real way to protect people from copying your ideas is to get a patent. And um, we're actually, let's see, in two weeks, we're doing a million dollar case study episode on this, but I know that's what you guys don't want to hear. You want to learn about it now. There's two types of patents. There's a design patent. There's a utility patent. Utility patents are difficult to get. They're very time consuming and expensive. Design patents are much easier to get and they do give you a certain level of protection. If you're making some significant modifications and these are like your inventions, you can get a design patent for it to protect people from copying it. That being said, um, I think it's a little bit overrated. Everyone's always worried about this and the truth of the matter is, it's probably gonna take a long time, months or years until anyone copies you. By then you have a bunch of reviews, you're ranking well for it, it's selling well, and that alone is like fairly defensible. So just something to think about. Um, how many products do you launch a year? Jamie Reed on Facebook said this, asked this. So I don't spend as much time on my Amazon business as what I used to. Now it's only probably like about five hours per week. We still are launching new products every month, but now it's probably like one or two per month. Or We kind of usually go actually in like little spurts where like I'll launch like five or 10 and then I won't for a couple months. So it's kind of hard to say. It just depends what else I have going on in my life, how much time I have to devote to it, um, what else kind of like my team working on it has to do. So yeah, it's hard to say. Did you ever sell wholesale or went straight into private labeling? So when I started selling on Amazon in 2012, I was selling some wholesale products. I am now 100% selling private label products. All of the wholesale products over the years, the margins just got too tough trying to compete for the buy box for them. Um, all right, <laughs> adventurous man I said, ask you anything, question mark? I heard you were living in Bali as a digital nomad. Is that true? That's awesome episode. Number two, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? 
from January 2015 until January of this year, 2018. So for three years, I was a full-time nomad. So that means like my wife and I, we sold all of our stuff. We literally only had one carry-on bag and we traveled around the world for three years. So for the first like year and a half, I spent most of that time in Asia. A good portion of that time, probably like two or three months was in Bali. So yes, I was living in Bali at one point. I'm not living there right now. Um, right now, today I'm in Vancouver. We actually just moved into a new office last or yesterday. The moving people moved our stuff yesterday. It's only half set up. You might notice my background looks a little bit different because I kind of temporarily set something up to do this AMA. Um, but I, my home right now is in Austin, Texas, but I still move around quite a bit. What's my favorite ice cream flavor? I like all the ice creams that have like caramel and chocolate and fudge and stuff mixed into them. So I'd say one of those are my favorite. All right. Searching for products on the top 10 and analyzing a on the Chrome extension, how do we avoid being misled by the Black Hat SEO products that are artificially ranked? This actually isn't that prevalent on Amazon. I don't think there's that many people that are like effectively doing Black Hat methods to um, get ranked better. People do do promotions and during promotions you will get ranked better. What I would recommend is tracking the products on the uh, Jungle Scout product tracker and you get to see day by day sales. And like before I sell that product, you know, if there's like one or one or two or a couple people or whatever that had like a huge amount of sales the day before or like for the past few days, then those people are artificially ranked. But that isn't something that just like on a day by day basis while I'm doing product research that I really worry about that much. All right, it's time to give away some swag. The first winner is on Facebook, Zane UI Rafi. Uh, you've won the Jungle Scout Chrome extension. So send us an email at freedombuilders at junglescout.com and we will get you hooked up with that. Congratulations. As far as a million dollar case study challenge t-shirt, this one goes out to, on YouTube to Adventurous Human. human. Uh, so again, send us an email, freedombuilders at junglescout.com and we'll get you sent your free t-shirt. Congratulations to both of you guys. All right. Someone asked, if I got suspended on Amazon Canada, would that also suspend my Amazon US account? I honestly don't know. I've never had my account suspended, so I don't have a whole lot of expertise in this area. I've talked to a few people who've gotten suspended, but for this particular scenario, I don't know. I think my guess is that Amazon would group all of North America and all of EU together. So I think probably if you got, well, I actually, I honestly just don't know, sorry. We have about five minutes left, so drop whatever last questions you guys have for us in the chat box. I'll be more than happy to answer whatever else I can. Hopefully by now, all you guys are signed up for the Million Dollar Case Study, but if you, if you aren't, this is by far our best season yet. Uh, you can go to junglescout.com forward slash sign up and that's a good place to um, enter your email address and you'll be notified of all the upcoming episodes on the Million Dollar Case Study. I would also recommend you subscribe to our YouTube channel. So if you're on YouTube right now, it's easy. Just hit that subscribe button. If you aren't, just go on YouTube, search for Jungle Scout, find our channel, subscribe to it. And that will also notify you when the new Million Dollar Case Study episodes are released. And they're gonna be released each week for the next I think 16 or 17 weeks. So a lot of amazing content coming at you soon. We have time for about three or four more questions. Do you think it's a good idea to look for a warehouse to keep the products outside Amazon to avoid high storage fees? If yes, do you have a warehouse slash storage company that you can do that? If you don't store your product, as long as you store your products on Amazon for like less than six months, their storage fees are very reasonable and they're probably about what you would get from any other um, any other warehouse, all right? 
So I don't store any of my goods outside of Amazon. By the time you factor in shipping it to this warehouse, paying their storage fees, and then shipping it to Amazon, I think very rarely do you save much money and there's a lot of hassle involved with that, so I'd recommend no. If you have a product that you ordered way too many units of and it's not selling that well and it's about to hit like the six month mark, then you could transfer some of that, store it elsewhere because after six months, Amazon's long-term storage fees do charge you a lot. Um, so that's something you can do or think about. What general scale opportunity score are you comfortable pulling the trigger on? Is six okay or do you push for higher? Is medium demand low competition considered a good opportunity? Six is okay. I think six is about the minimum that I would wanna pull the trigger on. Medium demand and low competition, yes, I'd still say that's considered a pretty good opportunity, especially for beginners, because like low competition is very important for beginners. You know, for your first product, it's probably not like super important for you for it to be a home run. You're probably more so looking to kind of like get the hang of everything. So yeah, I think a, a six with medium demand and low competition would be a good opportunity for a beginner. I currently have brand named retail watch business on Amazon. I'm interested in selling my own branded products in a different category. Should I open a new company and account or use the same account? I would just use the same account. You can email Amazon, ask for permission to open a second account, but I don't think it's really needed. I would just use the same account. Greg, just curious, does Jungle Scout work with Chinese sellers directly? If so, how was that experience, how's that experience been? So Jungle Scout, anyone all around the world is able to purchase and use Jungle Scout. We don't um, like discriminate or limit which countries can or cannot use Jungle Scout. So um, we do have Chinese customers, just like we have customers from probably a hundred countries around the world. Uh, so yeah, hopefully that answers it. What's the best review finder tool? I don't know what you mean about review finder. We here at Jungle Scout do have a tool called JumpSend, which is very beneficial to use to help you get reviews. It does two things to help you get reviews. One is you can give away coupons through the deal site. This increases the amount of people purchasing your product, which as a result will make it rank better. Um, so that's uh, one option. It also sends follow-up emails to everyone who purchases your product. Doesn't matter if they use a coupon or buy it full price or a lightning deal or anything else, that um, they send a, it sends a follow-up email, asking them to leave a review, and that is very effective. That, uh, that's the easiest thing you can do to increase the amount of reviews that you get. Let's see, I think we have time for one more question. I'm gonna to try to find a good one in here. How long did it take you to scale from one product to 10 as a seller? That probably took me a year to 18 months. The biggest factor that's gonna be affecting this is how much cash you have. So unfortunately, it is a cash intensive business. You have to pay your own cash in order to get these goods. So that's usually what's holding people back from scaling faster. If you have more money to invest in this business, it's gonna be easier for you to scale because you have more money to buy more inventory. So that's usually the limiting factor. The rest of it, once you've done it once or twice, it's kind of like rinse and repeat and it's a fairly easy process. So it pretty much just is gonna depend on how much money you have to spend and invest in your business. So. With that being said, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. I've enjoyed chatting with you guys for the past 45 minutes. I hope to see you again next week and in future AMA sessions. It's been fun. If you've enjoyed this, I would love it if you would hit that like or love button, depending on where you're tuning in from. That gets me excited to come back each week and continue to do these. Thanks again, guys, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.